So just before we turn to God's word, we'll have a wee word of prayer. Our gracious God and our loving and eternal Father in heaven, we thank thee again tonight for this time that is set aside to look again into the pages of thy holy word, to read the word of God, to meditate upon it. And we ask thee, Lord, that thou wouldst bless thy word to our hearts. We pray, Lord, for each one thou knowest our needs. Thou knowest, O God, as our faces differ the one from another, so do our individual needs. But how we thank thee, Lord, tonight, that as we come to make our requests known at the throne of heavenly grace and prayer, we thank thee, Lord, that thou knowest our needs and that thou art well able to meet each and every one of us at the point of our need. And Lord, as we come to thee tonight, we thank thee again for the privilege that as the saints of God, even in our own households, uh, and scattered one from another, yet we can join together, as the hymn writer talks about, at that blessed, heaven-sent mercy seat. And we thank thee, Lord, that we can call upon thy name and seek thy face. And how we thank thee, Lord, for answered prayer in the days that have gone by into eternity. We thank thee, Lord, for your hand upon those who have experienced even surgery for those who have had procedures. We thank thee, Lord, for your hand upon them and granting unto them a measure of health and of strength. And we pray, O God, that I would continue to be with them and to bless them. And, O God, that it might please thee to complete the healing process in their bodily frame. And may they know the touch of the Master's hand upon them. We pray again, Lord, tonight for our minister, the Reverend Alan Smiley, that thy hand would be upon him, that, Lord, you will bless him and be near to him and his dear wife at this time. We pray, Lord, that you will bless him in the will of God as he comes on the Lord's day, and, Lord, that you will fill him with thy spirit and bless him abundantly. We remember, too, our Father, the needs of uh, the missionary work and the mission field even in these days, and times are hard and times are difficult. And, our Father, we pray that thou wouldst overrule and undertake for thy servants. We ask thee again, Lord, for every one of our churches and our denomination, from the largest to the smallest, we pray, Lord, that you will bless them. We pray that you will bless as the word of God goes forth over the social media. We pray, Lord, that there may be many who will hear the word of God. And even in these days, our Father, when men and women who perhaps would not ordinarily attend the house of God, that even in their own home they may tune in to the services, that they might hear the words of eternal life and be saved for time and for God's great eternity. We thank thee, Lord, that the word of God is not bound, and that thou hast said that my word that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. And we pray, Lord, that thou wouldst bless thy word, bless our fellowship together tonight, and later on as we would spend a while before the throne of heavenly grace and prayer, draw near to every heart and every home, bless your people, and may they rejoice in the goodness and in the grace of our God. Bless our land tonight. Lord, we need thee. We look to thee. Lord, to whom else can we go? Man does not have the solution. But Lord, how we thank thee that God is upon the throne. And Lord, all the nations of this whole world, the Bible says, are but the drop of a bucket in thy sight and in thy presence. They are like the, the small dust, the fine dust of the balance. And so, Lord, we ask thee to intervene in thy creation and in thy world and move by thy Spirit's mighty power and bring men and women to that place of turning from their sin and wickedness and turning to seek God while he may be found. So be with us now, Lord, and bless your word to our hearts and bless our season of prayer in our homes for Jesus' sake. Amen. I just can I mention the services on the Lord's Day. Do you remember again at eleven thirty and seven services online and the Reverend Alan Smiley will be ministering God's word at both services and the will of God on the Lord's Day. On Sunday night the soloist uh, will be our sister Mrs. Natasha Atchison and Natasha will not only be singing for us but will be bringing a word of personal testimony. So we do pray for Natasha that the Lord will bless her. We thank God for the gifts that God hath given to her in the ministry and song and pray, Lord, that he, he might bless her as she would sing and testify and her brother, Reverend Smiley, as he would bring 
God's word. Do you remember again the sick of the congregation? Pray for the Lord's hand to be upon them. Do you remember again the situation in our land? Now, if you have a Bible, we want to turn uh, to the book of Psalms and to a very well-known psalm. It's the first psalm, Psalm number 1. The book of Psalms and Psalm number 1. The Word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. May God bless to us the reading from his own inspired and his infallible word. This first psalm opens up with that wonderful word, blessed, blessed is the man. And thank God for the word blessed uh, from the Hebrew word asher. It means happy. Or we could translate it, oh, the happinesses or the blessednesses of the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. When the great Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the great English Baptist preacher, he preached his way through the Psalms. We have his books, his sermons, The Treasury of David by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And Mr. Spurgeon said when he came to the end of the book of Psalms, it was with a very heavy heart that he finished his studies in the book of Psalms because he said he realized that perhaps never again in his lifetime would he be able to devote the same time to the Psalms and the, the, the Psalms of David and the treasury of David as he called it. And of course, the, the Psalms are wonderful uh, scriptures and in every aspect, as it were, of our lives, whether it be in joy, whether it be in sorrow or pain, whether it be in times of fearfulness or times of doubt or times when things are going well for us or times when we have great joy and celebration, we can sing the Psalms and read the Psalms and rejoice in them. And of course, when things are hard and times are hard and we don't know which way to turn, thank God we can take one of the Psalms and we can pray our way through that Psalm. And what an encouragement and what a blessing that has always been to our heart and to our life. Now, as you know, the, the Psalms are divided into five books that correspond with the opening books, the books of the Pentateuch, the books of Moses. And of course, therefore, when we come to Psalm uh, 1, in the opening book of the Psalms, it speaks, as it were, about the, the, the Genesis, corresponds to the Genesis book. And uh, that is a wonderful thing, because we're reading here about the blessed man, the blessed man. In chapter 1 here of the psalm, Psalm 1, we read about the blessed man. When we come to Psalm 2, just like in the book of Genesis, we read there about the heathen and their rage and people imagining a vain thing and people taking counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. And we, we sadly have to realize that the man is blessed who walketh not astray. But when man fell uh, in the garden and fell from that estate into which God created him, then he lost so much. But I want you to think with me for a moment or two about what I might call the deliverance 
of the blessed man. And that speaks about his separation. He has known by his separation from the world. He is a man delivered from this world, from its philosophies, from its worldviews, from its lifestyles. And you notice that there is a gradual progression, and it's a progression that is going downward. And the psalmist says here, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And then he says, Or standeth in the way of sinners. Finally, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If a man is walking, and he may be in the company, in the counsel of the ungodly, but as he walks, it is comparatively easy for him to leave that crowd, to step out, to turn, to go in a different direction. But then, if he stops and he stands in the way with sinners, that's not just so easily. But then finally, to sit down with them, to sit in the seat of the scornful. You see, the man of God, the woman of God, they are known by their separation. They do not listen to the counsel of the ungodly. We hear so much counsel today coming from so many voices, so many places, so many angles. But the child of God is known, we might say, by the negatives, by the things they do not do, by the places they do not go, even by the company they do not keep, by the books, the literature that they do not read, because they're they're, they're, on, they're marching, as we say, to the beat of a different drummer. And they are living in this life and seeking to live a separated life. And I want that life to be a blessed life, a sanctified life, a happy life, uh, as they do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Stand in the way of sinners of sinners. My, the writer of the book of Proverbs says, If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Now when we stand and we linger and we talk with the ungodly and they put their suggestions or their insinuations, uh, well, it's harder then just to walk away. And the Bible speaks there about sitting in the seat of the scornful. That is, those who mock the Word of God. Those who have no time for the Word of God. Those who just view it as another book. Perhaps they view the children of God as being foolish and uh, being uneducated, being not wise, being fools. But the Bible says here, we are not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way, or sit in the seat of the scorpion. In the New Testament Scriptures, you remember the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew's Gospel, speaking about the scribes and the Pharisees. He said there in chapter 23 of Matthew, in verse 1 and 2, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, and observe, and that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. And the Lord goes on to upbraid the scribes and the Pharisees, but he says they, they want to sit in Moses' seat. Moses was the lawgiver. They wanted to sit in that place. They wanted to be the lawgivers. They wanted to tell the people the law. But Jesus said, whatsoever they tell you, do it. But he says, they don't do it. They are hypocrites, and they say, but they do not. And they, they give men and women heavy burdens that are heavy and hard to be borne. When we talk about a lecturer in a university, and we might say, here's a man, and he takes the chair of philosophy. 
He takes the chair of medicine. He takes the chair of theology. Uh, we realize that's what he's thinking about. That's his bent. That's his whole life. That's his work. Well, the Bible says, the children of God, we are delivered. The blessed man is delivered. We're separated. And we do not listen to the ungodly. We do not linger with the ungodly. And certainly we do not sit with the seat in, in the scornful to laugh at the things of Christ. So the Bible says, here's the deliverance of the blessed man. We think about his separation but then you notice the delight of the blessed man in verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And you can write, and night. Oh, how often did the psalmist say, Oh, how I love thy law. In that 119th psalm, all the different words that are used by the psalmist to describe the word of God, the law, the commandments, the testimonies, the precepts, and so on. And uh, oh, Harry esteems the word of God more than his necessary food. Says the word of God is better than jewels or, or precious stones or rubies. Uh, 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 and what a, a, a high and holy view he has of Scripture. He loves the law of God. We have a different counselor than the ungodly. Just as we keep different company, we have a different counselor in the word of God. The Bible says here, he delights in the word. That is, it is his full affection. He, he loves the word of God. And my, the more we read the word of God, the more we think about the word of God, the more we learn of the Word of God, the more we love the Word of God. And the Bible says here, he, he meditates in his law day and night. If he gives it his full affection, he gives it also his full attention. Now, we hear the word meditate used in so many different ways in our society today. We talk about, people talk about transcendental meditation and other forms of meditation, but any kind of meditation that uh, teaches people to, as it were, disengage their minds and leave their minds open to whatever impressions might be formed therein. That is dangerous. But what the Bible is speaking here is not some kind of transcendental meditation. It is to give our full attention in a methodical and in a meaningful way to the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to think about what we have read in the Word of God. And then the Bible says here uh, that he meditates on this Word day and night, and the man, he's walking not in the counsel of God. He's not standing away of sinners. He's not sitting in the seat of a scorn. His delight is in love. In other words, he's a man who obeys the word of God. His delight is he's consecrated to obey the word of God. And as he reads the word of God, he can look at the word and say, is there a promise here that God has given for me? Is there a, a command in this word that God wants me to obey? Is there a, a warning here about a sin that I ought to avoid? As I think about it, as I meditate, as I read it, as I uh, delve into it, is there a, a truth here that I ought to learn? Is there a, a victory for me that I can gain through the Word of God? Because that man makes it his rule of life and of conduct as the epistle of James teaches us in chapter 1, verse 22 through to verse 27. His delights in the law of the Lord, and he gives it his attention and his affection. He obeys it, and he makes it his rule of faith. He makes it his standard of faith. You remember how Paul could write to young Timothy in the second epistle to Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 15. Paul reminds him that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, 
which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good, all good works. Paul says, I, Timothy, you've known the Scriptures. Make the Scriptures your rule of faith, your rule of practice, we read the Word of God, as the Bible says in the book of Revelation, blessed are they that read, and blessed are they that hear. And we read it to gain knowledge, and we feed upon it, feed upon the Word of God, that we might grow spiritually. As the Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 2, he says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. So the Word of God reminds us here about the deliverance of the blessed man. That's a separation. The delight of the blessed man has satisfaction. And then you notice just finally thinking about the blessed man. There's a beautiful description here of the blessed man. And it just sums up the picture of a saved child of God. The man of God, the woman of God. He shall be, in verse 3, like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And the psalmist says, here's the saved man. Here's the child of God. Here's the woman of Christ. My, they're, they're pictured here like a tree, like something that is fruitful, like something that has been positioned there because the Bible says she shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The Lord hath put, as the old children's chorus says, you in your small corner and I in mine. And the Lord has positioned us in the place where he wants us to be. And in our lives, we, we long to be in the, the, the center of the will of God and just where God wants us to be, day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. And he provides for us because we're planted by the rivers of water. Planted by the rivers of water. God provides for his people. How we have proved that over so many years. How good is a God we adore. Our faithful unchangeable friend, his love is as great as his power, it knows neither measure nor end. And you notice his perseverance, because the Bible says, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. My God blesses his people. God provides for them. God keeps them. And as the old hymn says, he will keep us till the river rolls its waters at our feet, and then he'll bear us safely over where the loved ones and the Savior we shall meet. And we will prosper. The child of God has prosperity. I'm not talking now about the health and wealth gospel that is preached today. But whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The man or woman of God who seeks to walk that separated pathway of a life that is dedicated, consecrated to God, and thank God is satisfied in the things of God, Here's a beautiful description of them in their salvation. They're like the tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth fruit in its season. And whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. My we, every one of us can look at our lives and we ask the question, where would we have been but for the grace of God? We could have been out into a lost eternity long ago. But my God in his goodness and in his grace has saved us. As we have sought to follow him and take up the cross daily and follow Christ, the Lord has blessed us, provided for us. He has kept us. He has blessed us. He has brought us safe through many difficulties, many trials. And he will bring us and he will keep us safe even in these days. We look to him. So even as we come to the time of prayer in our home, you remember the, uh, the, the people who need the Lord's touch, the sick of the congregation. Remember again those who have been bereaved. We pray again for all who have been bereaved in these days. 
because of the pandemic and COVID-19 also. We pray, too, for the frontline workers, the health service. We pray, too, for our presbytery, for the officers of presbytery. The decision has been taken. Uh, we trust that as the churches do open up slowly and properly, uh, with all the, the risk factors taken into uh, account, that God will bless, and that in a day not too far yet to come, we may be back to more normality and to the meeting of the people of God and the fellowship and the blessing. So we'll just bow together and we word of prayer and then go to our homes to pray. Father in heaven, we thank thee again tonight for the word of God. We thank thee for the blessed man who has spoken off here in Psalm 1. And oh, Lord Jesus, we, we long to be like the blessed man. We long to walk that separated, sanctified way unto thee, the Lord, thou wouldst direct our paths. Lord, we thank thee that even uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And yet even if he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. But Lord, you can lift us up again. Lord, we look to thee. We ask you, Lord, to bless every home and every family in association with the congregation here in Ballygowan. We pray, Lord, that thou wouldst meet the needs. Remember the boys and girls. We pray, Lord, for the boys and girls of the Sunday school, of the children's meeting, the Iwana, and all the things. But, uh, and we think of the young people in the youth fellowship, and we think of how difficult things are at this present time. But, Lord, we just pray that you will keep your hand upon them, that you will provide for them, that you'll watch over them, preserve them, keep them looking on to Jesus. Help them, Lord, day by day in their lives, we pray. Uh, bless them, Lord, we ask of thee. Remember the families, Lord. Keep your hand upon the families of the congregation. Bless them, Lord. Remember our minister. Remember the elders, the committee. Keep your hand upon them, we pray. And we pray that you'll bless every effort that is made through the work of God here in Ballygown to reach men and women and boys and girls with the gospel of Christ. And so we pray that, Lord, I was present thyself with us and bless us, for we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.